The Architect is one of the most mysterious characters in The Matrix, the creator of the simulation and the mastermind behind almost everything. But did you know that The Architect is a metaphor for God or that he was inspired by a real-world psychologist? Today we're going to talk about 5 things you may not have known about The Architect. Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. Number 5. The Architect is a Metaphor for God. In the Bible, Hebrews 11.10 says, For he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. In other philosophies, such as Freemasonry, a reference is made to Gedu, or Grand Architect of the Universe. In Gnosticism, the concept of God is presented as the Great Architect. In Hermeticism, the Great Architect may also be a metaphor alluding to the Godhead potentially of every individual, as in God. Lord Vishwakarma from Hinduism is regarded as the God of Architecture. He is the supreme god of craftsmanship and perfect engineering. In Rosicrucianism, the great architect of the universe is the supreme being who proceeds from absolute at the dawn of manifestation. There are many other examples in philosophy and religion where God is compared to or called the architect. Therefore, the architect is a metaphor for God still stands. After Neo opens the special door to the architect, we see a galaxy full of stars, symbolizing that the architect is beyond the universe. Also, one of the Neos yells, God is dead, to the architect. The architect is God a metaphor becomes more evident after he says that he is the creator of the Matrix. I am the architect. I created the Matrix. That is to say, the world. In addition, there are the Paradise and Nightmare Matrixes, which are allegories to Heaven and Hell respectively. Number 4. The Architect was inspired by at least two historical figures. The first is Sigmund Freud, the father of psychology. When Neo enters the Architect's room, he is sitting on a chair and analyzes Neo. Interesting. That was quicker than the others. Others? How many? Others? What a answer one. It is interesting reading your reactions. The architect acts like a psychologist who is explaining reality to his patient. Sigmund Freud is also known as the architect of the modern age of medicine. The second person is Vint Cerf. The architect may be a tribute to the man who created the internet. The architect and Cerf do share an uncanny resemblance, but so does Colonel Sanders. Number 3. He is a god and a devil. The evil demon, also known as Descartes' demon, malicious demon, and evil genius, imagines that an evil demon, or the utmost power and cunning, has employed all his energies from him to deceive me. This evil demon is imagined to present a complete illusion of an external world, so that Descartes can say, I shall think that the sky, the air, the earth, colors, shapes, sounds, and all external things are merely the delusions of dreams which he has devised to ensnare my judgment. I shall consider myself as to not having hands or eyes, or flesh, or blood, or senses, but as falsely believing that I have all these things, senses culminating in the dream argument, and then extend this with a deceiving God argument. In this proposition, the architect would not only be that almighty being, but he would also be deceiving us using his powers to persuade us. This hypothesis is also referenced by Morpheus when he questions Neo what reality is, if he could define it. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Number two, the actor was surprised by the role. Helmut Bakaitis, the actor who played the architect once recounted that he thought that he would play a counselor, a type of psychologist, but he was surprised after reading the script for Matrix Reloaded. 
Well, originally I went for a different part. I went, um, I was told they wanted somebody to play, um, I, I don't know who it was, it was a counselor, I think. I suddenly got a different script and was asked to read for this completely other part, um, which completely bamboozled me because, of course, I hadn't read the whole script. I only read the scenes that I was in and I thought, what the hell is this? God slash devil, the father of the Matrix, he says. And I thought, wow, this is good. Um, yeah, I can do that. Um. The complicated dialogue stunned him. He saw his character was malevolent and mathematical. Helmut also said that it was Keanu Reeves who explained to him who the architect was and what he was trying to say. It was Keanu who sort of translated for me what the brothers were trying to say, for which I will remain eternally grateful. So between the brothers and Keanu, they've taught me how to act in a way that I didn't understand before. The key was to kind of just wipe everything clean and just imagine that I was like a blank blackboard. And then it made sense. Keanu served as a translator, if you will, of the Wachowskis to simplify the character for the actor. We know that apart from the Wachowskis, Keanu Reeves is very knowledgeable and understanding of the Matrix. But the most interesting thing about Bakaitis is that he believed that the center of the Matrix was a mathematical construct and not a sentient being. I expected the center of the Matrix to be a mathematical formula, some sort of mathematical construct, not humanized. I was very surprised that it turned out to be a person. That was one of the things that surprised him the most. By the way, the screaming Neos on the monitors was one of the few times Keanu Reeves was allowed to improvise. One of the only times you'll ever get to improv for Wachowskis. I know. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I can say whatever I want! I'll smash this place to bits! You can't control me! You can't control me! You can't control me! You're dead! And And number one. The architect was always watching. When Neo met the architect, it was the first and only time Neo interacted with him. But the same cannot be said about the architect. The architect had been watching Neo his entire life. Every action Thomas Anderson took was influenced by him. We can see in the monitors the different stages of Neo's life, proving that the architect was always watching him. In the first Matrix film, there is a brief moment where the monitors can be seen right before Mr. Anderson's interrogation, so it's safe to say that the architect was watching the interrogation. One last thing, remember the earphones that the agents wear? It connects them to the system. It's how they maintain communication with themselves, and perhaps with the architect. But do you agree? Do you know of any other details about the architect? Rick's explained. Please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.